So thanks for having me. My name is Haval Balata. I'm a consultant chest physician in uh, Manchester, and I've been quite heavily involved with some of the UK screening work over the past few years. Um, and where we are with lung cancer screening is that it uh, it exists in certain parts of the world, America, China, uh, some of the Far East. But in Europe, we're, we're sort of in the process of thinking about implementing cancer screening. We don't quite have a national program as yet uh, in a lot of the countries. Uh, and in the UK, there's been quite a bit of work in this last few years uh, in smaller projects or particular teams, um, either research or aligned with the with the NHS uh, commission services, trying to look at implementing cancer screening. I think in the cancer screening world, we're probably in a place where uh, we now know it does work, it can save lives, and the question really is how do you implement it in an effective and safe manner? So this particular work that we're presenting at World Lung, uh, I'm quite excited to, to show because it's the first time a lot of these UK programs have collaborated and shared data. So we've all individually over recent years, you know, published papers, been up presenting at such conferences. Um, but it's nice to actually put some of that data together and show some cumulative uh, results to, to demonstrate what we've individually been showing. So this particular work really was looking at a, a specific uh, element of cancer screening um, uh, and that's obviously looking at some of the specific uh, some of the bigger headlines in terms of you know did we find cancers and uh, what some of the outcomes were from from the screening results but also one of the uh, concerns about cancer screening lung cancer screening specifically is false positive results so we know scans will pick up cancers but also some other benign nodules and when we look at some of the older data from the big trials, uh, some of them have reported high numbers, let's say, of false positive results, uh, and which, which will obviously cause harm, stress people out. You bring them in, you might do more invasive tests, cause some more um, potential complications. So these are obviously screening harms that we want to avoid. So what this particular work was about was really trying to get an up-to-date sort of modern real-world figure uh, between several different programs of of uh, these false positives, um, uh, as well as cancer detection and so on, uh, and compare it to some of the older extrapolated randomized control trial data that we often use. So just briefly what, what this was, this is five particular programs. So they involved the UKLS, which is the UK's biggest uh, cancer, lung cancer screening RCT, well-publicized, well-published, uh, well-known. Uh, and then we have the lung screen uptake trial from London, which again was an RCT primarily looking at uh, invitation material, but it did involve implementing screening and, and screening a lot of real world uh, participants. Then we have the Manchester Lung Health Check uh, pilot, which I was involved with, the Liverpool Healthy Lung Project and the Nottingham Lung Health MOT. So again, the talk isn't about going through them individually. They're all well publicized, published and presented. Uh, but those are the projects that were involved. Uh, and what we did is we took the baseline figures data from all these programs, put them together and just saw what some of the headlines were. So in terms of the results, what we had here was when you put all these five programs together, baseline round, we did just over 11,000 screening CT scans. And that's a big number. You know, if you look at a lot of the RCTs, for example, Nelson, which is very well publicized, the intervention uh, group in Nelson was about six and a half thousand men. Um, and a much smaller number of women. So 11,000 real world, you know, real life participants, lung cancer screening data is, is, is big and, and useful. And then when we look at, one of the first things we looked at here was just outcomes, you know, are, are we getting a lot of positives? Are we getting uh, negatives, et cetera? Uh, and the encouraging thing here was that the majority of the scans, I think it was just over 84%, uh, were negative and that's good. You don't want too many positive results in screening. So these are people that come in, get a scan, reassuring results and then move on to the next round or discharge depending on the protocol. Um, and uh, about one in 10 needed a, another scan in three months, but that was it. So they were never called to come into clinic um, or, or, you know, frightened about needing more tests, et cetera. Just another scan, make sure everything's clear and then back to the next round. And the positive rate was just over 4%, 4.2%. So that's good. It's not very high, lower than a lot of the published RCTs. So that's a good starting point to show that we're not bringing too many people into clinic, you know, scaring them and putting, through, putting them through tests. And then within those positives, obviously, you want a good cancer rate. Uh, and when we put all the results together, we had, a, uh, you know, I think an excellent cancer detection rate at 2.2%. So, again, 
much higher than a lot of the big randomized trials. So just to put it in perspective, based on around Nelson and NLST, the two you know biggest published um, or most prominent screening published RCTs were around 0.91%. So we're almost double that, one in 50 participants. Uh, so that's good. And that means essentially when, when you have a positive scan in this modern work in the UK, you know, there's essentially just over one in two chance that you do have cancer. Um, so that already tells you that we're being fairly effective at picking out the cancer results that require more work for possible, uh, sorry, screening results for possible cancer. Uh, and then I guess the, the uh, just the last bit of the results, uh, which was important, was this uh, looking at the false positives. So as I said at the start, you know, a lot of the cancer uh, discussions of all these false positives and some of the older data out there shows that, you know, we, we had high false positive rates and doing a lot of investigations and treatments for uh, negative or benign non-cancer results. And what we showed here was actually the false positive rate was very low in the UK. You know, five different programs ran separately with slightly different um you know, methods, but actually the results were consistent. So the false positive rate was 2%, much lower than what's, you know, out there published. Um, and then uh, we looked a bit further, you know, inv uh, invasive investigations for benign disease. So, you know, people who have bronchoscopies or biopsies for what's not cancer was very low, less than 1%. Looking at surgery for benign disease. So some participants will, you know, end up having an operation for something that we think could be cancer that is too small, too difficult to biopsy, for example. Um, but then they go through the operation and it was never cancer. And of course, that's a harm because you don't want to be doing that. Again, variable rates in, in the data, but we um, we showed this was very low, less than 0.1% of the screen population uh, and just under 5% of the surgeries. Um, so again, much lower than what's out there. Uh, and then when we, when we looked at major complications, and these are defined by, you know, the big RCTs, so, you know, in line with the published literature, we look at the major complications uh, or even deaths from investigations for benign disease. So, you know, a serious harm if you're putting somebody through this and causing a complication or, or worst case death from what was never cancer, we actually had no cases. So across all five programs, over 11,000 scans, we didn't have a single case. So that's really encouraging and, and uh, certainly much lower um, and, and much better than a lot of the older data that's out there that's extrapolated from these big RCTs. Um, so the point really we're making is that, you know, as we've been doing in the UK over the recent years, you know, looking at implementing cancer screening and with that getting some real important, real life, modern data to show people that, you know, what, what does happen when you actually start trying to screen as opposed to what's, you know, the theory from, from the big uh, research studies. And I think this is useful data to show that actually certainly the harms from false positives and investigations of benign disease and surgery for benign disease are very low, um, if not, you know, for, for certain categories at zero. Um, and I think that's really important to know going forward with screening. Um, and what, what that means is really what we've concluded with is that, you know, we, we talk about informed decision-making. So if, if a participant comes, and you, want, you should discuss with them, you know, about the pros and cons of lung cancer screening. Um, but to do that well, you need some good data to, to or modern data to, you know, be able to say, like, what's the chances of your scan being positive or negative? What's the chances of you having a test for benign uh, finding? What's the chances of you having surgery for benign disease? And and these are things that are difficult to to be exact on. But I think having this modern data, you know, large cohort from different programs in the UK. You know, it means you can update some of these uh, infographics that we're meant to use in this informed decision process. So if somebody comes uh, to a screening program, you know, soon uh, and, and they want to really think about whether they want to go ahead or not, you know, this kind of data will be useful to say, well, listen, based on this, you know, real world modern UK data, um, we think the chances of this or that and the chances of uh, whatever is this. So that's really the point of this particular study is really looking at cumulative data from a lot uh, from five different UK based screening implementation work over the recent years um, and it's good to see that even when put together results are consistent with what the individual programs have been reporting for recent years uh, and gives us a nice update on some of the harms um, from lung cancer screening compared with the extrapolated RCT data.